you expect a quarterback to do with these players? This offense couldn't beat LSU. Listen, guys, two bad games in a row. Two bad games in a row. Probably the worst game of his career last week. But all I see all of a sudden is trade Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz sucks. Carson Wentz is not the future. Carson Wentz is terrible. Carson Wentz is dog crap. You guys have the shortest memory in the world. Philadelphia Eagles sports fans, Philadelphia fans in general, have the shortest memory in the world. The first thing I want to address in this video is the Nick Folgian Society. The Nick Foles believers who, two years later, still can't stop obsessing over Nick Foles. They still can't stop complaining and just saying over and over and over again, we should have kept Nick Foles. Nick Foles, since returning to Jacksonville, I don't know if you know this because, you know, most of you Nick Foles in society people don't actually watch football or pay attention to anything that's happening in the NFL. Nick Foles, since returning to Jacksonville, is 0-2, and the Jacksonville Jaguars are being outscored 75-30. to Jacksonville fans... Want Garner Minshew back. You guys want Nick Foles back. Jaguars fans want Garner Minshew back. You say things like, the Eagles played harder for Nick Foles. The offense was more open. The defense played harder. The wide receivers ran faster and harder. Everybody played harder and rallied around Nick Foles to win the Super Bowl. Jaguars have been outscored 75-30 to since he's been back, and they're 0-2. Do the Jaguars play harder for Garner Minshew? Listen, if you're still on this Foles thing, here's what you can do, man. You can go down to the link. You can find the Nick Foles statue. You can oil it up real good, and you can hump Nick Foles' leg for the rest of eternity. Reality is we have Carson Wentz, and the reality is that Carson Wentz can win games, can succeed in the NFL, and I'm going to tell you how and why. Carson Wentz, the beginning of this season, in week one, Pro Fantasy Football, Pro Football Focus had him ranked the number one quarterback in the league. Week three, they had him ranked the number three quarterback in the league. Week four, they had him ranked the number one quarterback in the league. Week five, he fell to the number four quarterback in the league. Week six, he was ranked the number two quarterback in the league. And week seven, after the horrible Dallas loss, he was ranked the seventh best quarterback in the league. So you guys are talking about him about five weeks later like he's the bottom of the barrel. You forget the whole beginning of the season before the whole team fell apart. Every quarterback needs a system. Every quarterback needs a successful situation. Did you see Nick Foles when he played for the St. Louis Rams? Did you see that? No, you didn't. Did you see Nick Foles in Kansas City when he couldn't get the starting job and he was a backup? Did you see Nick Foles the last two weeks in Jacksonville? Every quarterback needs a successful system. When it all crumbles around them, it will make the quarterback look bad. Look at the guys in in New England, man. Like, Jimmy Garoppolo came in to back up Tom Brady last year or the year before, and he was great. D D Jacoby Brissett came in to back up Garoppolo, and he was great. The whole system is great. The game plan, the play calling, the creativity, the strategy – Everything runs smoothly, and the offensive system is ahead of the defense every single play in New England because the system is great. The Philadelphia Eagles this year are number 7th in the league in dropped passes. Now, you would think they lead the league in dropped passes, but they're actually number 7. But I'm going to tell you why you would think they lead the league in dropped passes. Because dropped passes in close games in the fourth quarter, they are number 1. So it's not just drop passes for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's drop passes that change games. 
People say Carson Wentz didn't spread the ball around. They say Nick Foles spread the ball around more. Nick Foles got the ball down the field and spread the ball around. Did you see the Eagles in week one with Deshaun Jackson on the field? Did you see them? That offense was wide open. Everything worked. The tight ends were open over the middle. The running backs were open in the flats. The, the slot receivers were open over the middle and on the short out, out routes. All because we had a guy that could sprint down the sideline that the safety and the corners had to stay on top of. We haven't had that since. The whole middle is just clogged. And all this offensive game plan does is tries the same thing over and over. It's over the middle to a tight end. Over the middle to a tight end. Over the middle to a tight end. It's the whole game plan. I don't know how Doug Peterson expects to do anything when all you're trying to do is the same thing every game over and over and over. You're not even trying to score points at that point. Do I really need to list off all the injuries the Seagulls team has faced this year? Carson Wentz was great in 2017. That's not a fluke. That's not some kind of thing that didn't actually happen. It actually happened because the players in the system around him were also great. Now the system left... We got this guy named Mike Groh, an offensive coordinator who has no idea what he's doing week in and week out. Doug Peterson can't call a play to save his life. And the whole team crumbled around him. This season, we lost all these players. Joe Osman, Crevion LeBlanc, Malik Jackson, Jordan Malaysia, Corey Clement, Hassan Ridgeway, Deshaun Jackson, Darren Sproles, Nelson Aguilar, Jordan Howard, Lane Johnson, Alshon Jeffrey, Brandon Brooks. The whole team fell apart around him. We played the Seattle Seahawks without Alshon Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar, Jordan Howard, and Lane Johnson. <laughs> what do you expect a quarterback to do with these players? This offense couldn't beat LSU. I mean, it's unbelievable, man. You can't do anything with this offense. And then you throw in the system on top of it, the predictive play calling, the unwillingness to be creative whatsoever. I mean, the right side of the line was terrible the whole game, and we kept running the ball to the right side. I mean, it does not take a, a rocket scientist to figure that out. Which side of the line is the weak side? Should we run to that side? Hell no. It's crazy. It's like... it's. <laughs> most obvious stuff that Doug doesn't get. And Mike Rose is sitting there in a corner with a blindfold on. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing at all. Oh, my goodness. Seattle Seahawks defenders said publicly that they knew exactly what was coming from the Philadelphia Eagles. Every team, they know exactly what it is now. Every team, knew, I'm tired of watching it. Every week it's the same thing. It's frustrating to watch. Nothing changes. Now they made a change of wide receiver, Greg Ward Jr. Took them 11 weeks to do that. I mean, after Matt Collins and Nelson Aguilar and these guys aren't doing anything, you think they would have made a change way before that, but they didn't. So they make a change last week, and look, the guy looks better than those guys have looked the whole damn season. But the one thing we will not do is put a guy on a fly route. Why will we not send a player down the field? I mean... Matt Collins is pretty fast. Why don't we call a play for him to run down the sideline and spread the field? It's so weird to me. All these guys do is run these same predictive routes, and they don't get any separation, and nothing happens. It's just over and over and over. It's the same nonsense. I mean, I don't know, man. Some people agree with me. Some people tell me I'm totally wrong. But as the way that I see it, man, the, what, the thing that I truly believe is that Carson Wentz was 11-2 with Frank Reich supplying the system, with Frank Reich creating the plays. He had an MVP season going. There was creativity. They were spreading the field. Nick Foles was a winner with Frank Reich. Jacoby Brissett is succeeding in Indianapolis with Frank Reich. Ever since Frank Reich left, Doug Peterson fell apart. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have that guy giving him the offensive system. And as the season goes on, it just looks like Carson Wentz is slowly losing confidence. He's just backing up in the pocket with nothing to do with the ball. 
He's backing up in the pocket with nowhere to go. The line's collapsing. He's looking up. I mean, the guy's, there's no receivers open. He just has to try to force it to somebody every single play. You saw the one series that Deshaun Jackson played against the Chicago Bears. It was like magic. It was like all of a sudden there's a guy that gets six feet of separation from his defender. How do we not have that from anybody else on his team? Deshaun Jackson comes back from an injury for one series and looks more successful than all these receivers combined. It's painfully obvious. It's the system and it's the talent around him and he's now slowly losing confidence and it's sad to see. It sucks. It's hard to watch. Uh, I mean, I say I would have probably over-exaggerated the hand injury and I would have sat him down and I would have sat him for the rest of the season because there's no point enforcing this system, this offense, this roster. There's no point enforcing this, man. You guys are hoping. You guys are hoping that we can win the division and go to the playoffs. For what? I don't want to watch this. I don't want to watch Nelson Aguilar and Mac Hollins in the playoffs. Do you really want to watch that? Come on, bro. All right. What needs to change? What needs to change in the offseason? I'm already there. I'm already in the offseason. You guys are still hoping, praying to win the division, hoping and praying to have a playoff game so you can go set up a playoff party with your family and be even more disappointed when they lose to a good team. It's not a good team. This is not a good team. They're not, they don't have a chance to even get close to a Super Bowl. What's the point of going to the playoffs and watching them lose? I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I would just like to get a higher draft pick at this point because we got to draft the best wide receiver absolutely possible. The first thing they need to do is sign Jordan Howard like yesterday. The guy's 24 years old. He's an absolute monster. Doug Peterson didn't use him for the first three weeks of the season. Do you guys remember that too? We traded for Jordan Howard and it took this guy two weeks to use him. He's just weird. He just doesn't make any sense. He was running 36-year-old Darren Sproles coming off of an injury in the beginning of the season. He had Corey Clement on the field next to Miles Sanders on a third down with Jordan Howard on the sideline. Do you remember that? I remember all of it. You need to sign Jordan Howard as fast as possible. We need to get this whole team younger. This is the oldest team in the NFL. Not an exaggeration. The oldest team in the NFL on average. It doesn't work. Guess what? You start to get towards your 30s, you start to get injuries. Your body doesn't hold up as well when you're 31, 32, 33 years old. Trust me. I walk down the sidewalk and sprain my ankle sometimes just walking. I threw my back out last year trying to pick up a pair of shoes. You can't play football and not get hurt when you're 33. They need to let a lot of bad contracts go. They need to force Jason Peters to retire. That guy doesn't have it anymore. It's almost hard to watch him play. I almost, I feel like the guy's going to fall over dead. He needs to just quit, bro. You're, like, you're, you're big, you're like 350 pounds, and you're just out there struggling, struggling, struggling. Like, stop putting your body through this, man. Stop it. It's not worth the rest of your life. It's just a game. Let the 24-year-old offensive lineman play the game, man. Let it go. We need to force Darren Sproles to retire. Obviously. He doesn't have it anymore. Let it go. We need to fire Mike Grow right now. Right now. Like, as soon as possible. I don't even know how he hasn't been fired yet. The guy's done absolutely nothing positive for this team for two seasons. Absolutely nothing. His game plan is horrible. Don't forget, Mike Groh was the offensive coordinator for the St. Louis Rams, Jared Goff's rookie season, and he was terrible. And he got fired. And he got hired on as our wide receivers coach when we fired uh, Greg Lewis. And then he got promoted from wide receivers coach to offensive coordinator. Do you think our wide receivers were good last year? Now, why in the hell would you promote the wide receivers coach of a bad group of wide receivers to coordinate the entire offense? I say Doug Peterson gets one more season. Because, listen, 2016, he was average. People didn't want him. 
There was more qualified coaches. We just took him because there wasn't, you know, we just kind of hired him. It was supposed to be like, a, we're going to hire this guy if he's not good for two years, but we're going to go get somebody with more experience. Uh, and they ended up winning the Super Bowl because of you-know-who. Um, and then you-know-who leaves. Doug's below average again. So 2016, he was below average. 2018, he was below average. 2019, he's below average. If he's below average next year, he gone. He gets one more year with a different offensive coordinator and a healthy roster. And if they don't succeed at anything next year, he's gone. Carson Wentz is 25. Don't waste time here. But for all you guys saying Carson Wentz stinks and he's not the franchise quarterback and all this stuff, I just don't know how your memory is that short, man. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. My name is DJ Eastwood. This is Run It Back. Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. Tell me what you think. If you agree with my opinion, let me know. If you absolutely hate my opinion and think I'm a raging idiot, let me know. My name is DJ Eastwood. This is Run It Back. Hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Give me a like. Help out my YouTube ratio. Peace.